Here's a hot take. In my opinion, there were more bad classic Sonic games than modern ones. Now, before you start typing your angry comment, I'm not talking about games like Sonic 1, 2, CD, or 3 and Knuckles. No, there are other games during this period before Sonic made his shift to 3D where some of his outings were not so great. I'm of course talking about the Sonic games that were on the Sega Game Gear. This handheld console was released in the early 90s. It was made to compete with Nintendo's Game Boy but it didn't really stand a chance against it. Its hardware is similar to Sega's Master System, which was made to compete with the NES, which also didn't stand a chance against it. They shared a similar game library. You can even play Master System games on the Game Gear with the use of an adapter. This system had a full-color backlit screen unlike the original Game Boy. But unfortunately, due to its absurd battery life and lack of compelling software and support, it was demolished by the Game Boy in terms of sales. I have yet to own one, but I did manage to play most of its Sonic games when they re-released them throughout the years. Some notable releases of these Sonic games were unlockables from the GameCube version of Sonic Adventure. You can also play them in compilations such as the Sonic Gems Collection. You used to be able to buy the Master System version of some of these games at the Wii Virtual Console, but unfortunately, the Wii Shop Channel closed down. I'm still pretty bitter about that. I regret not buying these games when I have the chance. At least you can buy a good amount of the Game Gear Sonic games on the 3DS Virtual Console, but are they even worth playing nowadays? Well, let's find out. There are around a dozen of these Sonic Game Gear games, so I'll be going over each of them one by one. I'll be playing through these games on the Sonic Gems Collection and through the minigame collection in Sonic Adventure. Let's get started. Eh, my ears! Why is this always so loud? Let's start with the first Sonic game for this handheld, Sonic the Hedgehog for Game Gear. This game was released the same year as the original Sonic 1 on Genesis in 1991. It follows the same plot and premise of the original, though the difference here is that this was developed for 8-bit systems in mind. They reused some zones such as Green Hill, Scrap Brain, and... Ugh, Labyrinth Zone. However, they did introduce some new ones called Bridge, Jungle, and Sky Base Zone. You can collect the Chaos Emeralds in each zone hidden somewhere in the level. If you finish the level with 50 rings, you can enter the game's special stages where you can collect rings to get 1-ups and gain continues through these monitors. This game shares similarities with the Master System version of this game. However, there's one major flaw that ruins the whole experience for me. The screen crunch. In case you don't know what this is, it's basically when the camera zooms way too close to the point where you can't really see what's in front of you. Due to the Game Gear's lack of resolution and screen size, you're basically stuck with this awkward camera angle. Now this isn't the game's fault. The Master System version of this game is just fine. It's all due to the Game Gear's limitations, but man, it's just a pain to play through. Not to mention that the controls haven't aged well at all. Sonic feels so slippery, it's so hard to make precise jumps, and it's so easy to fall off the edge. You can't even collect your rings after you've gotten hurt either. I also hate the bosses of this game. They can go from pathetically easy to frustratingly difficult. There are no rings during these boss fights, so one mistake and you're gone. The boss fights in Jungle Zone and Labyrinth Zone in particular gave me the most trouble. I understand that this game may have been impressive at the time. I mean, it had a color unlike the original Game Boy, but it's just so rough to play in today's age. I would say the best way to play through this is through the 3DS Virtual Console. In my experience, it looks and runs so much better here compared to playing these on console, but the game still has its problems. I'm not really much of a fan of its level design. I just can't see where I'm going most of the time, and I just end up dying. It even has an auto-scrolling section in Bridge Zone, and a confusing maze in Scrap Brain Zone. I did enjoy the game somewhat. There are a few levels that I enjoy breezing through, but in reality, there's no reason to go back and play this when you can play the originals. Unless you're crazy like me and want to play every single Sonic game. Now onto Sonic 2 for Game Gear. This version of this game was actually Tails' first appearance. This came out before the Genesis version of Sonic 2 was released. He was kidnapped by Dr. Eggman, and Sonic was tasked to gather all six Chaos Emeralds for Tails' safe return. And thus, Sonic starts his second adventure, or as I would like to call it, the worst experience I ever had playing a Sonic game. My gosh, this game is so needlessly difficult and annoying. This screen crunch will be the end of me. This is the most difficult Sonic game ever. With its lack of checkpoints, difficult bosses, and annoying level gimmicks, this is the game that literally broke me. I probably wouldn't be able to beat this game if I didn't have access to save states. I'd play any Sonic game over this. Never in my life had I ever disliked the Sonic game this much. And this is coming from the guy who enjoyed playing Sonic 06 and Shadow the Hedgehog. Granted, I've never played Rise of Lyric or Sonic Freeriders yet, but honestly, they seem more fun than playing through this. I dislike just about every level of this game. I have so much trouble with the first boss of this game, and you barely have time to react because of how small the screen is. Not to mention there's no rings during these boss levels. Dr. Eggman even saves you right before you fight this boss, where's the logic in that? And do I even need to describe this hand gliding section? The game is not even clear on how you can control it, I had to look up online to see how to get through this area. 
And these tubes, man, it's just so confusing. Look at how much time I've spent over here, and this is not even counting all the save states that I've done. Despite all this, there are a few highlights though. I did enjoy some level design ideas, like this bubble section and bouncing on water, and some of the bosses are pretty cool. I did enjoy playing through Green Hills Zone. Not Green Hill, Green Hills. The S makes all the difference. The music's great too. This zone in particular uses the song You Can Do Anything from that Sonic CD opening. And this game even came out before Sonic CD. There are Chaos Emeralds hidden throughout the levels like in Sonic 1, but honestly I couldn't find a single one in my first playthrough. And you need them in order to get to the true final zone and get the good ending of this game. If you do not collect every emerald, then it is implied that Tail straight up dies. Now that's just messed up. Thanks, Hitman. At least this credits theme is pretty good. This is a really short game, but I just did not have much fun playing through this at all. The Master System version of this game seems a bit better due to its larger screen size. At least you can actually see where you're going. But I honestly don't recommend playing through this unless you're really curious. So why did I even buy this on the 3DS eShop? Anyway, let's move on to Sonic Chaos. Now this game is so much better. I don't really have much negative things to say about this game. It's fairly standard, and it's honestly pretty easy. A great change compared to the previous game. Dr. Eggman had taken one of the Chaos Emeralds, and as a result, all of the emeralds scattered, and South Island began sinking into the sea. So it's up to Sonic and Tails to gather up the emeralds and stop Dr. Eggman. We can play as both Sonic and Tails. This is actually the first time where you can use Tails' flight ability. In order to obtain the Chaos Emeralds, you need to collect 100 rings, and then you'll be transported to the game's special stages. It may sound difficult, though honestly the game showers you with rings, so it isn't too hard to gain access to these stages. You just need to make it towards the end, and then you can grab the emerald. There are a couple of interesting new power-ups that you can obtain, such as the rocket boots and these pogo springs. After you finish a stage, the signposts can give you rewards depending on who is in the sign. If you get Dr. Eggman and a Flicky, they give you nothing, but if you get Sonic or Tails, then you can gain a continue or a 1-up depending on the character you're playing as. Honestly, I don't really have much else to say about this game. It's basically your run-of-the-mill classic Sonic game. It doesn't have much of an identity to help set it apart from the other games. It feels like getting the Chaos Emeralds is the bulk of the content of this game, because otherwise the game would be too short. And you don't even have to collect the Chaos Emeralds here. The only change is that the credit sequence look a bit different. I did enjoy it well enough, though I don't see myself going back to it very often. Now next up is Sonic Spinball. Over here we see that Dr. Eggman has gained control of his volcanic mountain where he built his volcano Vego Fortress. He's planning to turn animals into robots once again, so he installed a complex pinball system inside this fortress. Sonic and Tails attempt to stop him, however Sonic falls off the plane and goes to the lowest point of the fortress. As Sonic scales the area, he must collect all of the Chaos Emeralds in each stage and free all of the animals trapped inside here. The game mixes platforming with pinball mechanics, which is really cool. We can have some control to where Sonic is going. But I gotta be honest, I'm not really much of a pinball type of guy. I've never really been good at them. Though I had a lot of great memories playing 3D Pinball Space Cadet when I was younger. I couldn't get very far in this game. It's not a bad game or anything, I just suck at it. It's playable, but honestly, it couldn't hold my interest for very long. It's pretty faithful to the Genesis version, though there's only 4 levels and it feels more sluggish. I prefer playing the console version. The music and the controls are so much better and at least I managed to get farther in that one. Feel free to try it if you're into pinball, but you'll probably get a better experience if you play the Genesis version instead. Up next is Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Now this game is a puzzle game based on Sega's Puyo Puyo series. I've had so much great memories playing the Genesis version of this game. It's really charming and honestly it made the shift to the Game Gear fairly well. It's hard to mess up Puyo Puyo. I'm not the best at these games, but I've definitely gotten better and developed better appreciation of it after playing through the Puyo Tetris series. The game centers around Dr. Robotnik trying to take over the world once again by kidnapping the citizens of Beanville. He created this machine called the Mean Bean Steaming Machine to turn these creatures into robots. You never get tired of doing that, huh Eggman? It's up to this creature called Hasbeen to stand up against him. Now Hasbeen is basically designed after Carbuncle from the Puyo series, though technically they're not the same character. The goal of this game is to match up these beans or Puyos and try to make combos to defeat your opponents. You can see a lot of classic Batniks here from the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. You'll find Scratch, Grounder, Coconuts, and all these other Batniks that are seen in the first episode of the cartoon. It's a great game, but kind of redundant when you can just play the superior Genesis version. I love this version, I just really love all the interactions and the faces that these robots make. If you love Puyo or puzzle games, go for it. But I honestly recommend the Puyo Tetris game since it does a great job teaching you how to play if you're new to the series. Anyway, let's move on to Sonic Triple Trouble. This is one of the few Game Gear titles that did not have a Master System version to accompany it. This is a sequel to Sonic Chaos since most of its features and power-ups came from that game. Sonic and Tails had to gather all the Chaos Emeralds before Eggman gets his hands on them. As the title implies, you have three main enemies to deal with in this adventure. 
Obviously, one of them is Dr. Eggman. He tricked Knuckles into helping him retrieve the emeralds away from this treasure hunter named Knack the Weasel. Later known as Fang the Sniper, this game marks his first appearance. You have to collect 50 rings and hit these emerald monitors in order to gain the chance to get the emeralds away from Knack. Honestly, not too hard. There's rings everywhere and you don't even lose all your rings after getting hit. Only 30 at a time. You can play as Sonic and Tails here. Sonic has his classic spin dash and can even use a strike dash which most people know it as the super peel out. Though unlike the super peel out, you have a vulnerability for a short time so you can use this to attack enemies. Tails on the other hand can obviously fly and can even use the sea fox entitled plant zone to travel underwater. They both have the ability to use a flying spin attack. You can basically turn into a ball after bouncing on a spring. Normally you're defenseless after jumping on a spring but this is useful for attacking enemies. Which is a good thing since this game has some kind of obsession with springs. They're everywhere. I honestly really like the level design of this game. It's much more complex compared to the previous Game Gear games. And there's so many different pathways and secrets everywhere. This is probably my favorite Game Gear game of the bunch. That's not saying much, but it's really creative and has a lot going for it. It's not too difficult, aside from the obvious screen crunch, but that's a given for every game in this library. I'd recommend it if you're into classic Sonic games. You can easily get it on the 3DS Virtual Console. Now there's Sonic Drift. <sighs> Where do I begin? This game never released internationally, only its sequel Sonic Drift 2 did. At least not until these compilations came out. Sonic and his friends race in the Chaos Grand Prix. I do like that you can race in past zones from Sonic 1 such as Green Hill, Marble, and Starlight Zone. But wow, this game is so boring. There's just not much going for it. There's only 4 characters in this game. And there isn't even that much power-ups aside from collecting rings, using yellow springs, or getting a high speed or invincibility monitor. I guess each character gets their own special abilities by pressing up on the control pad by spinning two rings. Sonic gets a dash, Tails can jump, Eggman uses mines, and Amy gets a heart attack? Oh my. So why is Sonic in the car again? Honestly, I don't care if he uses one or not. Regardless, this game is just so dull, so there's not really much to do here. This ain't no Mario Kart, that's for sure. Surely the sequel improves on this formula, right? I guess they added a whopping three new characters. Oh Sega, you spoil us so much. You can now play as Metal Sonic, Fang the Sniper, and Knuckles. Metal Sonic has the ability to use a high speed dash, Fang can toss oil balls, and Knuckles can either punch nearby races or do a flying jump if there's no enemies nearby. They also added a good amount of new courses and new items such as a mine, flash star, and a reverse ball. This game was also the first game outside of Japan that Dr. Robotnik was referred to as Eggman. These two games are some of the most boring things I ever played. It may be better if I play multiplayer, but why bother when Mario Kart and the other Sonic racing games are just much better? Probably impressive at the time, but there are so many better alternatives out there if you want a good kart racer. Now let's take a look at some of the games that starred our favorite two Tails Fox, Tails. Let's start with Tails Sky Patrol. Our buddy Tails decided to go on an adventure on his own without Sonic. He randomly stumbled upon an island with a huge railroad. He thought it was the work of Dr. Eggman, but he quickly realized that this was the work of a lady called Witchcart. She claims to own this island and will turn anyone who goes against her into a crystal. So it's up to Tails to go rescue the animals and stop her. This game plays much differently than your typical Sonic game. If I can compare it to anything, it feels kind of like a shooter. Tails is always flying and you'll maneuver across the level avoiding any obstacles in your way. If he crashes, then you're dead. You can use the golden ring in his hand to defeat enemies or help you proceed. The game constantly auto-scrolls, but you have to watch out for his stamina meter in the top corner. You can replenish it by eating his favorite food, mint candies. This game wasn't originally supposed to be Sonic related, it was supposed to have more of an educational focus. But that idea was scrapped, and they approached Sega who decided that Tails would be the star of this game. It's a cute game, but it's not really my cup of tea. I'm not very good at it, but it's not too bad. I did have some fun with it. Though that's not the only game that he starred in, there was also Tails Adventure. Now this is an interesting one, the story of this game is different depending on the region. In the Japanese version, this game takes place before Sonic and Tails met each other. It takes place in Coco Island. Tails was enjoying a nap until an explosion happened. The forest had bursted into flames. They were invaded by the Battle Cuckoo Empire, who plots to capture the Chaos Emeralds. In the west, however, Tails apparently had a little vacation after his last adventure with Sonic to his favorite holiday spot called Tails Island. Then these mysterious army of birds decided to attack the island while Tails was taking a nap. And of course, it's up to Tails to go stop them. Not sure why they made this change in plot between regions. Though according to the description in the minigame collection in Sonic Adventure, this took place before they met, so I guess that's the canon plot. 
This game plays a heavy emphasis on exploration. It kind of gives me Metroid vibes due to the amount of power-ups you can find to help you progress. You can throw bombs to defend yourself, and your rings act as your health bar, though you don't lose all of your rings after you get hit. You can use gadgets such as hammers and remote bombs to help you explore these areas. It's not a bad game, but I think it's still a little too slow paced for my liking. If it was a bit faster, I would have enjoyed it more. I would still play Metroid over this, but this is far from the worst of these games. Speaking of worst, may I introduce you to Sonic Labyrinth? Often cited as the worst, this game is infamous of how bad it is. One day, Eggman was in a bad mood and decided to swap Sonic's shoes while he's sleeping. So why can't he just get rid of him right then and there while he's asleep? I have no idea. I question his intelligence sometimes. After Sonic woke up, he now noticed that he has these speed down shoes which was manifested by the energy of the Chaos Emeralds. Sonic could only remove them with the power of the Emeralds, so Eggman imprisoned him to this labyrinth. Though fortunately, Sonic still has access to his spin dash. So now he has to escape this labyrinth and take down Eggman once again. This game has an isometric view just like Sonic 3D Blast. When you explore these labyrinths, you have to find these hidden keys throughout the levels and head towards the exit. You are timed, but you gain more by defeating enemies and finding these keys. You can gain power-ups to gain invincibility, add more time, and increasing your speed. Whoa, slow down there Sonic, you're going a little too fast there. I don't enjoy playing through this game, just look how slow he is. You have to rely on using your spin dash to travel, but it's just so hard to control sometimes. This game is so dull and it's not very fun. You're better off spending your time playing something else. Now it's time for the last game release for the Game Gear, Sonic Blast. Oh my god, this game looks so ugly. I think I'm gonna throw up. It tries to capture the pre-rendered art style of the Donkey Kong Country series and Sonic 3D Blast. Emphasis on the word tries. It's basically another side-scroller. You can play as both Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic is able to double jump and Knuckles can still do his classic glide and climb. You can find special rings in the level to collect the Chaos Emeralds, but still no Super Sonic despite there being a signpost of him that gives you 30 rings and a 1-up. I'm sorry, I just can't get over how disgusting this looks. It looks so janky, the physics here just feel so wrong. The game has a few neat ideas. I like some of the bosses here, like this one. It kind of reminds me of Goku from Dragon Ball riding on Nimbus. But other than that, this game is so dull. Probably one of the worst games I ever played. What a note to end on. And that's all the Sonic games released on the Sega Game Gear. What a roller coaster. As you can see, I'm not really much of a fan of the majority of these games. This is why I believe there are more worse games in the classic era of Sonic than the modern one. Though that's not to say that they're all bad. There are a few hidden gems in there. I like Sonic 1, Sonic Chaos, and Triple Trouble. But other than that, I find most of these games really boring and are plagued by the dreaded screen crunch. I know it's not these games' fault, this is a product of its time. So of course it's gonna have issues that makes it harder to play in the modern day. Handheld gaming was at its infancy. I mean, look at how far we've come over the years. We have the Nintendo Switch, for example. We can pretty much play all these console quality games on the go. That's amazing, I would have been blown away when I was a child. Technology has advanced so much over these generations. Even though these games are really dated, it's still important to look back at their history and see how much they've evolved. Plenty of people grew up with these games and hold them dear and close to their hearts. You know, after playing through all of these games once again, it helped me realize something. These games are sh Oh, let me fix that real quick. There we go. Isn't that much better? Curse you, Screen Crunch. You always find a way to make things worse.